Hey, today I want to talk about how to declutter or purge or just trim down your houseplant collection. Maybe you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, but you're not quite sure which plants to get rid of. How do you determine that? Are you going to regret it? I just want to talk about that a bit today, how you can go about trimming down your houseplant collection and hopefully not feeling so overwhelmed by it. I think we all get to a point if you've been collecting houseplants for a while. I know for me, I used to have over 250 plants, but I've cut that down, maybe not a lot, but I know that more than 200 plants is just not realistic for me to take care of. Everyone kind of is gonna have their limit for you. Maybe it's 10 plants or 50 plants or 100 plants, or maybe you can take care of 200 plants, but you can't take care of 250 plants. So everyone's gonna be a little bit different, but if you're feeling overwhelmed, I wanna talk about some stuff that we can do about it. Some tips that I found really helpful when I start to get overwhelmed, I like to have my plants grouped together in one room. I find if I have my plants scattered in a bunch of different places, it's a lot more effort to go and water them and check on them for pests and stuff. So I find having them in like a central location really, really helps me to take care of them. I also try and have as much stuff automated as I can. So all my grow lights are on timers. Even my frog vivarium has an automatic misting system. And that has helped just tremendously in lightening my workload. The less things you have to check on and do every day, the better you'll feel. I also use a large water pressure sprayer pump thing, whatever they call it. And I add fertilizer to that every time I water. It, I think it's about seven liters. So that's a fair amount of fertilizer that I'm making up at a time and a fair amount of watering that I do at one time. That has also helped a lot. So if you can do something like that and try and prepare stuff in batches, that really helps, I find. And then I think another thing that has really helped me is using self-watering pots. I have a couple that I really like that I'll link in the description, especially for Hoyas and stuff. I feel like it just makes my life so much easier. My plants grow better anyways, so I will keep using those. But you can be doing all of those things and still be feeling overwhelmed and that's okay. So let's talk about how you actually go about getting rid of plants and deciding which plants to get rid of. So I know a lot of people say, keep the plants that bring you joy and get rid of stuff that doesn't bring you joy anymore. But I know for me, it's kind of hard to actually tell if a plant no longer brings me joy. Like I have 200 plants, or at least in the past, I've had 200 plants or more and genuinely felt like I loved all of them. I didn't want to get rid of any of them. So if you're having a hard time determining that, some of the questions you can ask yourself that I found helpful are like, do you get excited when you see a new leaf? coming out. That's one of the, for me anyways, one of the things that brings me a lot of joy is when I see my plants growing, I see the leaves developing, but I know if there's a plant that I'm not, it's getting a new leaf and I'm just like, eh, then it's probably not a plant I'm not, I'm super excited about anymore. And you probably already kind of subconsciously know the plants that you're not excited about anymore. They're usually the ones that end up getting neglected. You know, the last plants that if the, if the watering can runs out of water, they're probably gonna be left until last. You might see those plants starting to suffer and then when they look unhealthy, then you might like them less and less. So if you know there's some plants that you're constantly neglecting, it might be because they're not bringing you that much joy anymore. So another tip, and this is actually adapted from a decluttering video just in general, I think from um, Caroline Winkler that I really like on YouTube. She talked about basically the red wine test for furniture or clothes or something like that. You know, if you spilled red wine on this item, how sad would you be to get rid of it? Would you be kind of like relieved? Like, okay, now I have an excuse to get rid of this. Or would you be, you know, genuinely 
sad. I think we can do the same thing with our plants. So if your plant got thrips or it just suddenly died, how would you feel? Would you be relieved? Like, oh, well, at least I don't have to keep taking care of this one anymore. Or would you be really sad about it? That might be a good way to determine, okay, maybe I don't actually need this plant around anymore if I wouldn't be that sad if I had to get rid of it because something happened. Another thing is, do you like to show off this plant? If you have an, an Instagram, that's one thing that I find is nice because you kind of know the plants that you're showing off all the time. And hopefully it's because they're plants that you really like and that you're really excited about. But even if you don't have social media that you post your plants on, you know, are you talking about this plant to your friends who like plants? Are you showing off the new leaves and the growth and or something cool that's happening to your partner? If it's a plant you're not really engaging with, it might be because they're not bringing you as much joy as they used to. Another question. So what are your goals for this plant? What do you want to see happen? Do you want to see the leaves get to a certain size? For me, I find that once my Hoyas have gotten to a certain size and they've bloomed for me, that's kind of the point where I'm like, okay, I've kind of gotten out of this plant, everything that I wanted to get out of it. And I'm okay now to move on and maybe let someone else enjoy this plant. I had the same experience with a, a large, just green form Monstera that I was growing. So my goal for the plant, what I was really excited about was for it getting secondary fenestrations. But once it reached that point, I kind of felt like, okay, now I've kind of achieved everything I want to achieve. I'm not as interested in this plant anymore. So at that point I needed the space for other plants and I didn't have a problem getting rid of it because I had already achieved what I wanted to achieve. For me, I find if there's no challenge anymore, then I get bored of it. So that's another thing to think about. Do you still have goals for this plant? What do you still want to achieve? Or have you achieved everything you want and maybe you'd be okay letting someone else enjoy it? If you're still on the fence and you don't know, okay, do I not like this plant because I'm neglecting it? Or am I neglecting this plant because I don't like it? What I actually recommend is to move your plant. If it's in a spot where it often gets neglected, move it to somewhere more prominent where you're going to see it every day. You are gonna be able to take care of it a bit better. Maybe once you see it start to perk up a little bit, then you'll be more interested in it again. Or if it's in a spot where you're seeing it all the time, you're seeing the new growth, and you still feel kind of meh about it, then that's a good way to know for sure, okay, yeah, this plant, I don't really need it around anymore. On the flip side, if you're really worried that you'll regret it after you sell or get rid of a plant, what you can do is put it somewhere you won't see it at all for say a week. Not much longer than that because you don't want it to die in case you do change your mind. But if you put it somewhere where it can kind of be out of sight and out of mind and you don't miss it, then chances are if you sell it or something, you're still not going to miss it. So do a bit of a trial run if you're really on the fence about a plant that you're thinking about getting rid of. Okay, so you've decided on a plant that you wanna get rid of. Here are some ideas of what you can do to get rid of your plants. Maybe you already know this, but here's just some ideas. I will often give plants away to my friends. A lot of the more common house plants, you know, my friends don't really care necessarily about rare house plants, but they honestly just appreciate having any sort of plant or greenery in the house. People like the, that are perfect to give your plants uh, a new home. And chances are they really, really appreciate it, so you'll feel good about giving them away. If your plants are healthy and you think they still have some value to them, you can sell them on Facebook Marketplace or Facebook uh, buy, sell, trade groups. You can also trade them on Instagram or something like that if you're not interested in them anymore. Uh, one thing I'll do on Marketplace is you can actually like type in a plant specifically and see if you go into filters, you can look at just 
sold listings so you can see what sizes of plants have actually sold and the amount that they've sold for. So that can be kind of helpful if you're not really sure what to price your plant at. Now, keep in mind, the lower you price your plant, the faster you're probably going to get rid of it. If you are worried about losing money on your plants because maybe they're more rare, expensive plants that you're selling, that you're moving on from, uh, you just have to keep in mind like, how much is your time and your space worth to you? The longer you keep a plant around, the more time it's gonna take, you're gonna have to be caring for it all through that time. So if you're willing to do that and you have the space, fine. But if you need to get rid of it quick, you might have to be willing to take a loss. It's okay, I'm telling you, it's fine. Your, your happiness and you're not feeling overwhelmed is, is gonna be worth more than any money that you lose. Now it's possible that if this is a plant you've kind of been not excited about for a while, that it's unhealthy and maybe even has pests. So in that case, if it is still a high value plant, you might be able to sell it for a discounted price. You really want to disclose though the issues with it otherwise people are going to be able to tell anyways and you'll lose your credibility if you disclose it that's perfectly fine but just know that you're not going to be able to sell that plant for the same amount you might even have to settle for giving the plant away for free you can do that easily on facebook marketplace put an ad with no price and just I give it away. I, I personally like Facebook Marketplace because you're usually dealing with local people who can just come and pick up the plant from you. So then it's no extra work, you know, trying to pack it up and send it off somewhere. You're probably not gonna wanna do that if it's already a plant that is stressing you out or causing you to feel overwhelmed, like packing up plants is a bit of work. But that is an option too if you can't find anyone locally who's interested. Now, if it's really far gone or you've listed it and just there's no takers, you might have to consider throwing away your plants. Now, I know for some people that's like really taboo, like they really don't want to throw away plants. It is perfectly okay. Plants don't have feelings. It's fine. I know the bigger like mental struggle is that like, we kind of cling to this glimmer of hope that, you know, maybe the plant is still alive and we can save it. Like if we just put it a little bit more work, if we just put a little bit more work in, maybe we could save it. Nine times out of 10, that doesn't happen, but occasionally plants do come back. So what I usually do is I'll put the plant somewhere where it's not gonna require any extra care on my part. Sometimes that's as simple as like watering it and sticking it in a plastic bag where I can leave it for three weeks and the water isn't gonna evaporate. I do that for calatheas and stuff sometimes. It might be putting it in a prop box. You can also stick it outside if that's an option for you based on your climate. I do that a lot, like just let it get rained on. I don't have to worry about watering it. That's even good for a plant that has pests because there's a lot more natural predators outdoors. So you actually tend to get less issues with pests. So if you can put your plant somewhere where you just don't have to deal with it, that's ideal. And then if it dies and you have to throw it out at that point, well, you haven't really lost anything. But if it lives, then you're golden and you didn't have to do any extra work in the meantime, hopefully. So hope you found some helpful tips in this video. Trust me, if you purge and cut down your plant collection, you will feel a lot better about the plants that you do have. Of course, if you've gone through all this effort to get rid of certain plants, try not to then fill that spot right away by making impulsive purchases. The more mindful you can be, the less purging you have to do later. And that will also save you money and just be better for you in the long run. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate all the support. I really, really hope that you found something in here that was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye.